Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's been a really, really long time since I've done a video, but today I'm excited to do my wedding breakdown. Okay, so I just got married about two weeks ago, actually one and a half weeks ago, and um, yeah, today I thought it'd be really interesting to go through the good, the bad, the ugly of wedding planning in Singapore. Okay, so I think a lot of people when they hear like wedding planning in Singapore, or like having a wedding in Singapore, it's like... <sighs> expensive so i'm also going to include in today's video all the cost of my venue the cost of my dress makeup package flowers everything just so that you can have an idea of how much it's going to cost if you are planning to do uh if you are planning a wedding in singapore and also keep in mind that because the gst is increasing next year means that the prices next year are also going to increase i have a lot of things to say because <clears throat> Um, wedding planning by itself is stressful. For me, the worst thing is my vendor's experience. So I also wanted to share that with you guys, anybody who's planning to use the same vendors that I did. I had amazing, amazing experiences with some and some of them I had pure like... Very, very bad. So I have included timestamps just because uh, the video can get pretty lengthy. So let's start. So I'm going to start with my venue, which is Sofistel Sentosa. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful venue, even by itself. I chose a venue that... I chose the ballroom. It's the Saffron Ballroom. And that particular ballroom, you can only have up to uh, 13 tables, which is about 130 people. And then they do allow you to have some tables of 11. I would say it's on the smaller side. Most weddings, you have like 150 and above. They do have a separate ballroom for that. However, I chose the Saffron Ballroom because I loved the interior. They have like nice uh, parquet floors, uh, fairy lights in the ceiling, mirrors all over. And I thought the whole place just looks super romantic already, like without having to do much decoration. And the best part about Sofitel is the view. The solemnization is right outside the ballroom. And the outdoor is an outdoor solemnization and it has a beautiful view of the cliff. So you can see like the water, the boats in the distance of Sentosa. So absolutely stunning when it is sunset time. The only problem with that is that if it rains and with Singapore weather, it's really unpredictable. You never know. Actually, September is supposed to be like a... It's not a dry month, but it's supposed to have some rain. It didn't rain for most of September except our wedding day. So um, yeah, you, you just have to kind of take risks like that. Uh, the rain did stop before our solemnization, so that was nice. We still managed to get the beautiful sunset wedding that we wanted. However, if there is pouring rain, Sofitel does have extra ballrooms or extra venues that serve as backup plans, uh, contingency plans. Okay, now when it comes to the staff, the staff... The coordinator, I, I didn't really and uh, I didn't really appreciate the coordinator. I feel like no, I did not that I didn't appreciate her. I felt like she was kind of sloppy and this is something that I found quite annoying is that every time we would schedule a call and this is not frequent, okay, it's like every few months just to get like updates and stuff. She will always be late. She will always be late. I always have to text her and call her to pick up the phone. And after that, she will just pretend like nothing has happened. And, and that kind of annoyed me because, I don't know, in general, I find that's kind of rude. But especially if you're planning a wedding, that's really unpleasant to have to, have to be chasing your wedding coordinator from the hotel. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really like her. But the rest of the staff at Sofitel, they were pretty, pretty good. Um, on the actual day, the people who helped us with the running of the show, um, people who... Even the, the waiters and waitresses at the banquet, they were all really, really nice, really helpful. The food was so good. The tasting food was so good. It's not like the typical uh, menu that you would expect. And instead of getting oni at the end, which I know a lot of the old people at my wedding wanted, but instead of getting that, we actually got a green tea tiramisu, which a lot of people love. The presentation was so good. Another thing about Sofitel is that they also allow dogs in their premise. So it was amazing because I managed to have mochi and I have Bingsu walking down the aisle uh, with me. So we had mochi walk first, then Bingsu. And it was so, so, so cute to have them. It just really made the evening so special. Okay, so now for the cost. The total cost of our venue is $30,000 for 12 tables. So that is just 
the bare cost of the tables. Uh, okay, it includes one wine for each table. So we have 12 tables. So it actually 30k, right? Only included 12 bottles of wine and one barrel of beer, which to be honest, is not a lot. And the cockage for Sofitel's wine is extremely high. I, I believe it's like 40, 40 plus plus, so 40 plus plus for a cockage. Then you have to pay for the wine. After that, it's, it's insane. I think their wine per bottle is like $70. But with a little bit of negotiation, we did manage to bring the price down. And then they kind of agreed to give us a waiver on the wines. Oh yes, one big tip for wedding is you always, always have to ask. Just be thick skin and ask. If you're the type of person who's very shy to negotiate, very shy to ask for discounts, you will just get chopped. You will get chopped by the wedding industry like nobody's business. Especially when it comes to the hotels, you do have to negotiate with them. Unless you are okay to pay. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is our decor. Okay, so the company that we, we went for is Fleur's... And it's actually the original decorator, the original, uh, yeah, original decorator from Sofitel. Uh, we did go and find some external, external decor people, and the price was incredible. It was incredible. So, uh, ulala, for a similar scope to what the decoration at my wedding, purely fresh flowers would have cost me fifteen thousand dollars, which I don't find that it's extremely expensive because it's just um just because fresh flowers are super 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 expensive in singapore i don't know what is it maybe it's the import it's like the handling it's a lot of work so it's fifteen thousand dollars for the cost of the entire place including reusing some stuff transportation and also so reusing stuff like the owl flowers from like the solemnization bringing it in there also there's an extra cost in asking people to move the stuff so that's $15,000. Another one which um, the weather, wedding planner didn't tell me about was uh, quoted us just $30,000 for flowers without carpentry. So what we got from Fleurs, everything here is only $4,000 top up from our package. So our package from Sofitel, that $30,000 includes some decor and then we top up, it was only $4,000 and it was amazing. Uh, even though initially when I looked at their catalogue, I was kind of suspicious. I was like, mm, I don't really like the designs. But because everything else was so expensive, I did eventually go back to Fleurs. And then I spoke to this guy called Dave. He was really, really helpful. And he um, he basically told us, okay, this is what I can do. This is what I can do. And then he... Uh, even though I, I was not very assured because again, their Instagram page and their website doesn't have a lot of photos. So it was kind of like really just believing in him but it turned out amazing for only four thousand dollars including the mirror which is the i think it's like very trendy nowadays to have like your own customized mirror so including the mirror we only had to pay 50 extra dollars for a brand new mirror that we brought back home so it's now lying in my room i love the mirror i'm gonna like um just erase the welcome to our wedding and then keep our name there and then just use it for like photos and stuff Okay, another thing to keep in mind is using fresh flowers. I know it's only a once in a lifetime thing, but using fresh flowers is really extremely, extremely expensive. And unless you are willing to pay for fresh flowers, and the thing is you need to think about uh, after the wedding, all these flowers you're either going to bring home, which where you go put it, right? Or you're going to throw it away. So what we did is we had a mix of fresh and fake flowers which worked out very well because to be honest in the photos i can't really tell it's definitely a different feeling from having totally fresh flowers the smell is different and okay some of the fake flowers i could tell they're fake from just like looking at it at a distance oh my puppy wants some attention but um yeah so this is um again up to you what you want but i would say if it's possible to do a mix do a mix there are some companies that will only do fresh flowers so yes Keep that in mind. Okay, next, let's talk about dresses. I have so much, so much, so much to say about dresses. Okay, I had bad experiences. I also had very, very good experiences. So let's start with the... Should I start the good? No, I start with the bad. I'm going to end up, end with the, the best one. Okay, so I actually got my dresses from three, place, three places. The first one is the gown connoisseur. Second is Rico Amona and the third one is Brightfully Yours. 
Okay, and here is the price breakdown of all three places. You can see um, Gong Corner so is actually the cheapest one. Brightfully Yours is it's pretty okay, cheap, because it includes the makeup and two dresses. And Rico Amona is very, very, very expensive for just one dress. Um, my worst experience, I would have to say, is at Brightfully Yours. So let's get into the tea. Okay, so at Brightfully Yours, I had two main problems with them. The first one is regarding the selection fitting. So how Brightfully Yours process works is you have the first, which is like a free fitting. So basically, all the bridal studios, they allow you to go down there and then, you know, try their dresses for about an hour and then see whether you want to go with them just based on like the the dresses that you've seen. Maybe you, you like something and then after that, they have a... After that, you decide whether you're going to sign a package with them, how many dresses you're going to get from them, and then afterwards, you uh, go for another fitting. So, with places like the Gown Warehouse, which I also really like, and the Gown Connoisseur, you are allowed to go for multiple selection fittings after the initial one. So, you're allowed to go for multiple sessions, and you don't have to pay if you have already bought a package. I think even for Gown Warehouse, they don't charge you even if you didn't buy a package, because I went there, I know my friend definitely went there more than once before she finally decided to get the dress from there, and I went there at least twice, and they didn't charge me. So, uh, with Gown Connoisseur, they do charge if you did not buy the package for the second uh, trial onwards. So, with Brightfully Yours, even though I bought the package, I was only allowed one selection fitting, and I was not informed of this, until after I had put down the deposit. So I just assumed I just assumed that because I had bought the package, they would just let me try dresses multiple times, which was not the case. And each of their selection fitting is only an hour long. So yeah, they they only they did this very strange thing where they made me put down the deposit before they sent me the terms and conditions. And, they, and then at the end of the term and conditions, they said that by putting down the deposit, you have agreed to the TNC. And I was like, um, then you should send me the TNC before I put down the deposit. Okay, so uh, I only found out that we have two selects. We only can select once. And I will just say, honestly, unless you really, really, really know what you want or you just look nice in every single gown, it's probably not going to work out very well for you because, you know, you're a bride. You're only going to be a bride once and you want to try out the different shapes. Maybe you started out liking, like me, like started out liking ball gown. Then after that, you want to try the A-line. Maybe after that, you want to try a mermaid dress. After that, you want to try a halter top. You want to try whatever it is. One hour is just simply not enough for you to find out the type of dress that you like. Okay, because a dress may look nice on someone else, but it doesn't mean that the dress will look nice on you. And what dress may look not nice on other people, it may look amazing on you. So you really never know unless you try. And if you are not given the time to try, you tend to make very rash decisions. And actually, some of the dresses that I picked, um, the dress that I picked, I picked without trying. At first, I picked without trying because the 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 second problem with the Brightfully Yours dresses is I did something very stupid which I, I really highly recommend that people do not do is I went to sign a package with Brightfully Yours before I went down to physically try their dresses because at the time when I signed their package it was um, in January this year and in January I was still living in UK and they were going to raise their prices so I've been hearing a lot of nice things about Brightfully Yours. You know, a lot of influencers go for their dresses. So I was like, okay, I went to their website. I took a look at their dresses. And it's really, really very pretty dresses. And then they said that the size that they can accommodate is up to UK 12. And I was like, okay, I'm definitely not a UK 12. So I assume that the dresses that they are showing on their website can fit my body. And that was a terrible, terrible assumption because... At Brightfully Yours, most of their dresses actually could not fit my body. Um, they were either too... They were, they were not either. They were mostly too small. And I don't think that I am very fat. Um, I am... Yeah, I'm not... I wouldn't even consider myself 
plus size but I couldn't fit into a lot of their dresses especially at the bus area so their cups from what I I did email them and ask and they said their cups are mostly like A and B cups so if you have any cups bigger than that it is very difficult to look nice in their dress because their dress tends to emphasize on a very nice like cup like that so if your bust is bigger than that your boobs are bigger than that you, you, you really look like being stuffed into the dress and the torso I think their dresses okay I think in general their dresses are geared towards more petite um, girls so their torso is also a lot shorter than mine so it does when I wear make me look kind of um, compressed so in the end, I did email them and made a bit of noise and they gave me a free selection fitting but my feeling towards the place had already been kind of negatively affected. I was already feeling kind of ugh. If you are the bridal assistant and you see that I cannot fit these type of dresses or I'm not able to fit your cup sizes, I don't know why they keep giving me the same cut. Okay, some of them, yes, I chose because I do not know but she also didn't give me any recommendation so I ended up with this selection which I really, really, really hated and I had already paid like $2,000. I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? My life sucks. I have to go and find another bridal studio and I cannot even get my money back. So that's exactly what I did because my mom was like, okay, you're only going to get married once. You really don't want to be in an ugly dress. So I was like, all right. And I went to hunt for another place. I ended up going to Rico Amona because that because their dresses fit my body and my shape uh, better. So that was my main wedding dress. And I did like my main wedding dress. My only problem with Rico Amona, again, they only give you one fitting, which I cannot understand why. But at that time, I had already tried a lot, a lot of different shops and I tried a lot of dresses so I was more okay with with what I wanted and I did see like some dress that I really like so I was like okay I'll just go with that anyway I didn't have enough time to go, keep going back to try honestly I think my vision my, my my mind at that time was very clouded because the dress was freaking expensive okay it was a thousand oh, after GST it was one thousand four hundred dollars for a single dress which is ridiculous but anyway with Rico Mona the service was all right Nothing spectacular, but the dress, oh my gosh, the dress on the day itself, the dress, I don't know why, there was like some crease over here which just would not go away. And I thought that, because I did raise this up and then they said, oh, you know, we'll steam the dress, blah, 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 blah. But there was this crease that it just wouldn't go away and it was definitely not my stomach. It was like, the dress maybe it got worn too many times or whatever it is, but it already had a dent in the corset. Another thing is the alterations were freaking long. Uh, and the alteration in the end, it didn't really fit my body that well, especially at the bus area. When I was trying the dress, I maybe, I don't know, maybe the person before me had like a similar bar, so it fit quite well, it fit quite snug. But when on the actual day, it was kind of big, and they weren't able to pull it in nicely. So, yeah, for $1,400, it was kind of meh. For both Bradfully Yours and for Rico Abona, you do have to collect the dress and bring it back the next day before three o'clock okay and it's kind of a damper you pay so much for this rental dress and then they expect you to give it back the day after your wedding before three o'clock because yeah you're just trying to enjoy like some time with your husband your new husband you know and then you're like oh shit okay we have to go for like we have to go and return this stupid dress so with um so now I'm going to talk about Gown Connoisseur. Totally, totally different experience. I loved the place. Amazing service. And in the end, I chose my pre-wedding shoot. I chose my pre-wedding shoot dress from Gown Connoisseur. So like I said just now, for Gown Connoisseur, you are able to keep trying dresses. Like every time they have new collections or maybe sometimes you see like, mm, actually I'm not really feeling this dress, you can go back and try. They have amazing service, a really amazing service. They you they always offer you like a beverage, like Milo, coffee, tea, and after that, you get your own private room. Uh, Brightfully yours, you also get a private room. Rico Mona, there's no private room. There's no, uh, yeah, it, it's not really a private room. But with uh, Gown Connoisseur, they have a very nice private room with your name. They even have a massage chair. Those like massage machines, you know, like they put on the chair. So for your husband or whoever go with you, I went with my husband 
and the they were really patient in explaining and they were really patient in allowing me to choose the own the reason why i didn't go there at the start is because okay first of all they don't do online consultations so when i was in uk i had already i was already feeling very anxious to get a dress because a lot of places were increasing their price so i was like okay 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 i should just buy a package i should buy a package very bad choice so but with so that's why i didn't do the online consultation another reason why i didn't go there to choose my second dress is because i was not too keen on their designs even though i really love the service but my pre i did my pre-wedding shoot about one month before my wedding so uh, I saw a dress on their ins- I saw a dress on the Gown Connoisseur's Instagram which I really really liked and it's kind of like a copy of the Galia Lahoff dress. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my dream dress. So I decided to go back to them. And so even though my husband didn't rent a suit from them, they still offer him like a tie. Uh, another thing that they did include was like a pre-wedding shoot set. So they kind of have like um, mosquito repellent. They had like wet wipes, makeup removers, cotton buds. It's just like so, so thoughtful. And Gown Connoisseur also sends someone to deliver the dress to your house and also sends someone to come and pick it up. So you don't have to do it yourself, which is so helpful. And yeah, I really regret not going with them at the start. Moving on. So for my makeup, I went with two companies. So I have Ottilia and I have Dear Muse. So Ottilia was for my pre-wedding shoot and Dear Muse was for the actual day. With Ottilia, actually I wanted to go to Ot- with Ottilia for my actual day but the makeup artist that I wanted was already booked up and I booked her like so, I asked so many months in advance but she was already booked up which I was really really upset about. So my makeup, the makeup artist that I really wanted to go with, there were two of them, one is Rowan from uh, Ottilia and Hannah from Ottilia. So... Uh, I actually ended up going for Ottilia's makeup class so both of them ended up being my teachers and... When I was watching how they do makeup in class and like watching them do makeup on the models, I was like, oh man, I really, 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 really wished that they were my makeup artist. So I did end up uh, getting uh, Hannah as my pre-wedding shoot uh, makeup artist because it was like on a weekday, so I think she was available. She did an amazing job. She knew exactly, we had a call before, she asked me what I wanted and she made me look uh, exactly what I had in mind. And she also gave me like this kit for like the pre-wedding shoot and then it had like, um, it had like li- uh, an extra, uh, extra like uh, a bit of lip gloss, a little bit of lipstick for like for touch-ups because I didn't pay for her to follow us throughout the way. We also had like makeup remover wipes and she just gave like this really, really nice pouch and I loved the, her the entire time. She was really chatty, made me feel really comfortable. It didn't even feel like three hours. It was like three hours long. Three, almost three and a half hours of makeup and hair and yeah, it just didn't really feel that long. And also after she took some photos with me with her personal camera and then she like edited them then she sent them to me. It was really nice. Even after the photo shoot she continued to like ask me you know how was it i hope everything was okay wish you a good marriage and all that and even though it's like really small things it really makes such a difference when you are like a bride it really makes you feel very special so i learned a lot about customer service from her uh, on my actual day i had dear muse which was also she was also really good the american artist that i got was celine and she's also yeah same name uh she was also really nice we did have a trial session before, so it comes with the package with Brightfully Yours, which is included in that $2,000 package. I did receive comments on the day from my friends, that, oh, your makeup is really nice. Like, it doesn't look like you're overdone. So I think the makeup that she did for me was a little bit uh, different from, from what I'm used to and the kind of makeup that I would put for myself. So when I saw, the, when I saw it, I was a bit like, hmm. Especially the lashes and the brows was a little bit much from what I normally do. But then I actually saw the photos and it really looked quite nice. So yeah, I think she did a good job. But service-wise, I really feel like Ottilia, Ottilia just knocked it out of the park. Okay, now let's talk about bouquet. Halfway there, I got my bouquet from Bloom Loft. Okay, I have simple things to say about them. $390 for my bouquet, plus four boutonnières, plus hair flowers. Okay, so I actually didn't use the hair flowers in the end. I never was planning to use the hair flowers, but it came in a set. Because I needed boutonnières as well. So, okay. Uh, I think the flower arrangement, the choice of flowers was really, really, really beautiful. I love their creation. So, I am the type, I'm the type that like, you know, like the very colourful, very spring uh, type of arrangement. It's not really classy. It was like a big bouquet. The problem with my flowers is 
uh, they did give me kind of older flowers like I could see on the orchids. They are not flawless flowers. Uh, for three ninety, um, mm, I felt I don't okay. I'm not in the flower really business, so I don't know whether that's like considered a lot or a little. But I could see like the the flowers. They had like kind of a bit of brown spots and then a bit of like death looming in the flowers already. But I was like, it's okay because I collected it the day before. So the next day, I was just going to use it anyway. And But the, the problem is the next day, the moment I took it out from the flower food, which I left it in the water for like, I left it in the water overnight. The next day, my flowers were dying. The petals were dropping. Uh, before, yeah, before I actually managed to get to the solemnization time because we did use the flowers to take photos. Again, I don't know if this is normal, but the, the petals were like kind of dropping. Um, it was drooping a little bit. So, um, luckily the arrangement itself from afar, it still looked very vibrant. And also because of the way that the bouquet is structured, the bouquet is like going down like this. So it still looked alright, but I was a little bit worried throughout the day because yeah, the flower petals were just falling down and I was like, er, er, okay, um, it's just normal. I don't know. So yeah, that's all I have to say about the flowers. The next one is the wedding planner. Now, I don't think a lot of people in Singapore actually use wedding planners. Especially if you're just going to do, okay, I don't know how to put this in a nicer way, a very blunt way, is if you're going to do a cookie cutter wedding, do you actually need a wedding planner? I would tell you honestly, the answer is no. Uh, cookie cutter, I mean like, you're not going to have like a first dance, you're not going to have special activities, you're not going to have all that kind of rara i don't know like like fireworks okay no that you can do fireworks maybe not a yacht or whatever it is not a special program you don't really need a wedding planner um because let me tell you my experience with the wedding planner okay and i was really contemplating for uh whether con contemplating whether or not to keep this in but i didn't have a very good experience with the wedding planner because First of all, I only hired this wedding planner for the actual... Okay, my dad hired her for the actual day coordination. Which means that three to three, about two to three months before the actual day, she would be the one to get in touch with all the vendors, finalize the program, finalize the itinerary for the actual day. Uh, so it does not include going to find the vendors, liaising with them the packages. Because by the time that we got the wedding planner... I had already done all this. So I had already found the people to do dress, venue, cake, everything I had already found. So it was just about the wedding planner compiling this list, keeping all their contact information and making sure that the on the day, the show runs smoothly and I do not get disturbed. And I feel like I was definitely disturbed. So um, it was not cheap. The actual day coordination package was about $2,400, if I remember correctly. It was about $2,400. Again, to be honest, if you have a very cookie cutter kind of wedding, you can work with your photographer to find out the timings that you need. Because your photographer is probably very experienced. The photographer that we got was amazing. So she was actually very experienced. She already kind of, we, we could have gotten the timings from them. Even my videographer, he actually sent me a schedule of like the entire day. So he, he put down the timings and everything. I think it was, yeah, he had the timings and everything already. So if we didn't have the wedding planner, we could actually just refer to their list and create our own. Okay, on the, and then on the actual day, I was really annoyed because the vendors... The makeup artist, the cake, my mother's makeup artist was late. And they did not keep track on any of them, which was really pissing me off because they, they I mean, that's what we paid them to be on the actual day. First of all, in the morning, my mom's makeup artist was late. And then I, and then I had, she told me and I had to tell them like, hey, can you all go and check like, where's the makeup artist? Can you like, um, call them or something? And they had no idea that she was even late, even though they had the itinerary in their hands. So... Uh, then after that, the makeup artist, when we went to Sofitel, um, when we went to Sofitel, the, the makeup artist was there, and then the makeup artist kept calling me to ask me, like, oh, where's the room? I don't know why they didn't keep coming, uh, get in touch with the makeup artist, so that the, and the makeup artist didn't have their contact, so that they, they, they had to keep contacting me, even the cake money was delivered. Again, all of this information was already given to the wedding planner, so I was quite annoyed. Throughout the night, I was like, what are you all doing? Um, yeah, 
when the cake came and I was in the middle of my makeup and then I, and, and, and then they were like, oh, where do we put the cake? And I'm like, <sighs> the thing is, if I didn't have a wedding planner, I would have been prepared for this. I would have uh, been prepared either for my husband to, to tell them where to go. I would have been prepared for my bridesmaid to tell them where to go. But because I thought the wedding planner was going to do it, I just didn't, I just didn't plan for it. And again, um, yeah, they was, they actually in our contract, they said they would be here from 8 to 12, which was like 16 hours. But then they told me beforehand, they told me about a week before the wedding, they were like, oh, actually, while you're doing your makeup at 8 o'clock, we have nothing to do. So can we don't come so early? Can we come at 10? To which I was like, no. Because... I'm doing my makeup, my mom's doing her makeup. Other people are busy getting ready. Who's going to open the door for you? And you are the wedding planner. Shouldn't you be here earlier than everyone else to oversee everything and make sure nothing goes wrong? And I'm glad that I said that they needed to come because again, like my mom's makeup artist in the morning was late. They couldn't do anything about the makeup artist if they weren't here. And I would have to call them to, to call and, and it would just have been a whole mess. So I actually had, I was quite disappointed by the wedding planner. So this is from Beautiful Gatherings. Next one. Okay, we're almost done. Now we're at the cakes. I initially got my cakes from Z and L. And I got their cakes from my 21st birthday. So I thought that they were pretty good. I enjoyed the flavor and their design. So after that, I ordered a cake from them. It was $590, if I remember correctly. All the prices are going to be there anyway. They have changed their name and they are now known as Field Notes. Okay, very, very bad experience with the cake. So this is the inspiration that I gave them and this is the cake that they gave me. So it was like a vast day and night difference in the cake. I, 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 was, I was quite shocked because I didn't see the cake and they didn't send me a photo of the cake before they delivered it. So the only time where I saw the cake was like when I was marching in, I was like, <gasps> this is not the cake that I ordered. And I did email them after the wedding and say like, um, yeah, this is an unacceptable cake and also it really looked like a rush job for $500, $590. I was, I was shooketh. Okay, so then they gave me, after I emailed them, they gave me 20% back with about $100 plus. Dollars, so, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Should I have asked for more? They really, they really, really, really messed up on the cake and it was on stage. It was part of the decor. So I was disappointed but the good thing is after that everybody got to eat the cake and their chocolate fudge was quite nice their vanilla lemon was also quite nice so uh, maybe we'll buy the cake with, from them like a slice but definitely their wedding cake i would not buy a birthday cake from them they did okay for my 21st birthday though so i really don't know what happened okay now moving on so the last few are the three that i really enjoy all these are the photographers the videographers and the photo booth so let's start with the photographer so we went with the perfect statement and the perfect um the lead the lead uh, photographer clara amazing amazing experience okay so she's actually my my husband's friend from uni and she was just so experienced during our video call with her she asked all the important questions which my wedding planner didn't even ask she asked important questions she really made me feel very confident that she knew what she was doing and she had the experience she will um i think one of the very important questions that she did ask which i didn't expect her to ask was what's your family dynamics like or are there any like conflicts are there any tensions so you know we shouldn't ask them to take pictures together or which I thought actually that's pretty important. Shouldn't the wedding planner know? But okay, so she she did ask and she she gave us an overview of that day, what time she will be there, what she's going to take photos of, if we had any questions, if we had any photos that we really, really wanted her to take. Even on that day, she worked very well with the videographer, which was Film 192. I think they, they definitely know each other because uh, Clara recommended him. And... She was just directing us. She was like asking us questions to get natural shots. Just positioning us very nicely. And she, I also received the teaser photos and I thought the colors were really nice. It's a vibe that it's a vibe that I like. So highly, highly recommend her. I think she, we paid about... Her, her prices now about 2009 for 10 hours. And yeah, but I think she's already like... She's really, really popular because her 2024 slots are already filling up fast. 
So the next one I'm gonna talk about is the videographer. We are gonna we went with Film One Nine Two Croy from Film One Nine Two is hundred and ninety two cm. It, it ended up being very helpful because he helped me like hang up my wedding dress for the pictures. He was also really friendly. Also kept the energy up the whole day, and I was quite impressed with his um same day edit, which is the video that you show from like the morning process all the way until like the banquet. So you show your guests at the banquet, and it was really nice. I think he managed to capture quite a uh, natural like all oh, smiles and everything and even when he was giving directions like directing us on what to do I thought sometimes that we were kind of awkward like because we are not people who are models or anything so sometimes it could be a bit awkward but in the video it actually turned out very nice the editing was nice so um also pretty good experience I really I would recommend I think he he did he did a good job and Video, the video in the end, he filmed about 10 hours and then we after that we paid for a wedding documentary which hasn't come yet because it's only been one and a half weeks. The wedding documentary will come in about a month. That was in total about $3,000 for the video. So it's also not cheap. But it's a lot of work. It's really a lot of work. So the last one is the 60 shutters. I think the staff was really helpful. They were really helping the guests have fun. You know, like look here, smile and then encouraging people to take photos. And... What I like about 60 shutters is that you also can decorate, you can decorate a custom frame. So for us, this was our frame, which I love. I thought it was so cute. We had like a little passport stamp and then um, another one was, um, was a passport stamp and one was a stamp. I like I like the pictures. I think our guests also had a lot of fun going there. And then after that, they gave us like a HD soft copy of all of our guest photos so that we can we can keep it. I hope you enjoyed this really long video uh, but I really wanted to give a very honest review on all the vendors, the experience and also the cost so that it helps them future bright. It really does help and, and I mean if I had heard all these reviews from someone I trusted, actually not even someone I trusted, if I had heard these reviews from a stranger on the internet, I probably would have taken it into consideration. Oh my gosh, last tip, last tip, I promise. For wedding dresses, Always, always, always make sure that you do not get sucked into their same day promo. Don't get sucked into their same day promo, okay? I know they're going to give you like $100 off or like, like whatever it is, a special price that you only can get on this day. Unless you are very sure of this dress, unless you're very sure of this shop, do not get sucked into this promo. For most of the wedding dresses, especially um, the bigger one, the... the more popular ones, I would say, like Gum Warehouse, um, Pridefully Yours, they are always at wedding shows. So, try the dress. Make sure you really like the dress before you sign the package and don't sign the package just because they are giving you a same-day promo because if you do that, you will regret it like me. Okay, you may not regret it, but you will look sometimes on Instagram when other nice dresses come up, you'll be like, oh no, why didn't I try more? And I tell you, it's, I tell you, it's, a, real, it's a real regret of mine. I wish I... I wish my wedding dress experience would have been nicer because that was the part that I was actually looking forward to the most. Okay, so this is really the end of this video. Let me know any more tips that you have to share with other brides or how was your wedding experience. Yeah, I'll give you on a scale of 10. 10 is like flawless, amazing, nothing went wrong. Start to finish planning was smooth. Oh. And one was like, watch the shit. Even the actual day was just a mess. Let me know and I will see you next time.